Okay. We got Tommy, and of course, this is Love Them Knives at the 2023 SHOT Show with Revo Knives, and we're going to talk about their knives. I mean, yeah. we'll get after all of them. Yeah, let's do this. We'll start on the USA-made side. Revo opened a factory about a year and a half ago out of Mead, Colorado, and we've been making a couple of cool knives in there ourselves, and we just uh, love to show you. So yes, we're going to do. Yeah, we'll start with the uh, Revo Nexus. It's basically our first uh, Bali song. It's got uh, aluminum handles on ceramic bearings, 154 CM blade steel, kind of a Weehawk blade shape. Definitely, uh, again, made in our factory. We have great partners as far as White River Knives doing the bevel grinding for us and Folger Precision making the custom screws for us. But everything in this knife is made in the USA and, and, and again, right out of our factory in Colorado. Uh, the full anodized version is MSRPing at 235. You can pick them up on Blade HQs and Knife Centers and those kind of guys right now, Blade Ops. I think they're around 215 or so, 210. But they're available now, so check them out for sure. Obviously, I'm not like Mr. Flipper, but they're definitely, <laughs> you know, we got guys for that. You know, we got Bill, we got we got Lawrence from BRS, and he's obviously part of Revo. Yes. And uh, those guys make sure they work like a real flipper wants. I make sure they're mechanically sound and manufactured right and, you know, ready to go for that reason. Okay, and so you they're available in different blade styles, or is it so the same blade style? Right now, we do have our, our uh, Weehawk that you see here. We are releasing a Tonto and a Trainer that will be available by April of 2023. Uh, the Tonto version will be the same price point as this guy, and uh, the, the Trainer will be about $10 to $15 less. Uh, but again, all made in Colorado. Very nice. Yeah. And you're working on a new prototype, right? Yeah, so this is a prototype. So I you know, definitely understand like it's we drew it, modeled it, and uh, machined it all within a day or two before SHOT Show. Um, but it is a button lock, but it's actually going to be a, uh, an automatic. And it's based on the, uh, the Revo Nest, which has been a very popular folder for us on the import side. But we're making this the Amuck, which is short for automatic muck or automatic nest muck. Yeah. Um, so again, like a prototype version, not super snappy, but it will be. Uh, but we just wanted to show some of you guys what we're working on stateside and, and what's going to be here. And again, a very proven pattern that everyone really digs and likes and, you know, left and right carry, aluminum aluminum handles, uh, you know, clock springs, buttons, cool hardware. Uh, and this is actually going to be released in a 500 quantity. And uh, the initial release is going to be Magnica. So we're, gonna, oh. we're definitely going to go big time with it. So That's yeah. nice. Yeah, I've got to get, I'm, you know, I'm not Mr. Automatic Knife Guy, but... Yeah, I understand. Wait, Magna Cut, and uh, I like the, the Ness design. Yeah. So, now, Ness, a muck. Yeah. There you go. It's going to be good. We're, like I said, we're going to release 500. Hopefully, we'll have those out the door and maybe available to the consumer at Blade Show in Atlanta. Oh, okay. By, by June, then. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in Atlanta. Yes, sir. You better hold one for me. I want a purple. <laughs> Okay. Perfect. So that's what we got on the state side. So you want to take a look at the imports here yes. on the other side of the table? Yes. We basically have some of our existing knives, which are, you know, more entry level, Vipera XLs. You know, they're definitely a great knife for the money. It's 8CR. We got, we got reinforced nylon handles and backspacers. We've got a deep carry pocket clip. It's our budget friendly knife. Like anyone can do, get into this knife. You know, you're finding these in stores for like 35 to 40 bucks. But again, Revo is about quality for the money. It's not about being the best knife, but the best knife for the money. Yes. And we got a few different colors here, obviously. We'll try to go across the board on uh, colors and making sure everyone kind of gets what they want. We definitely try to have that like earthy tone to things. We don't have a whole lot of toxic colors. So um, that's a karambit? Yep, that's the K9 there. Okay. Happy to, this, is, this isn't new, but we've had it out for a little while. The, the thing that sets this knife apart is uh is mainly two things is one it's got the the tonto here on the blade and what that does is it creates the hook bill that you traditionally see on a karambit but it lets me carry this knife and open a box open some lunch or whatever and it's not uh it's an edc tonto or an edc karambit that isn't just a hook bill okay um, it's skeletonized on the inside of the steel handles uh yeah. so it does help it weigh a little less it's got the kinetic opener out of your pocket like you'd want to see on a karambit uh, left and right pocket clip. This jimping that's exposed or proud on the on the ring is really about texture and understanding where the knife's at in your hand if you want to. Um, 
We are actually updating this in 2023, where it's going to be coming with micarta scales and a button lock. Oh, okay. um, but that should be available probably April and a or button lock. Yeah, probably okay. April, maybe May. Okay. Yeah, probably in Atlanta too, right? Yes, sir. Moving down the line a little bit. Yes. Uh, you've seen the Berserk Rev 2s have been out for a minute now. And that's it's called the Berserker? Berserk, yes, sir. Oh, Berserk. Yeah. Okay. It's an inset liner, 9CR18 MOV blade steel, left and right, deep carry clips on, on bearings as well. So it's a flipper. You know, you just close the knife and open it. Really nice. For a big knife, it's really light. It's, it's just G10. It's, just, you know, just the blade. Backspacer is aluminum, so it's really it's it's properly weighted for the blade this way. Fits in the hand well. Reverse grip is always something we try to you know use in our knives. We want to make sure our ergos are always spot on. Have you held this knife before? No. Just give it a shot. For for an oddly shaped knife, in a lot of ways, it feels really good. Well, second finger goes in here. Yeah, you're kind of you're right up on it, aren't you? Yep, and that's just a big compound Tonto. If you look at it, it's literally a Tonto blade shape. It's just kind of a large, sweeping Tonto. Yeah, it's a good size knife. It doesn't, it doesn't middle flicker Whoa, that well. well it's a little to be bit. a flipper, but yeah, yeah. The original Berserk was a was a middle flipper like that, or a Spidey flicker kind of thing. Okay. Awesome. I'll hand that one over. Right? So, so that's Berserk. Berserk. And here we have the, the Duo, which has been out for a minute, but it's really been doing really well for us. We've got a drop point here with a frame lock, and it's it's a pretty small knife this direction. It's Everyone's like, oh, it's a little bit wide. It is, for sure. But we've got the flipper action like you'd expect to see on the knife. And then right here, you have this auxiliary cutter that'll open up. Oh. And you basically can open a package, you know, a uh, bottle opener, a scraper, a slotted drive. Our cutter is uh, not chisel ground, so it's super slicey as far as opening things like that, Amazon package. Cutting a strap. Yep. But what makes this different really is not the tool, but the fact that it's locked in place. So right now it's locked open. Uh -huh. So if I'm using this like a screwdriver, it's not folding on me. There's a little liner right here that uh -huh. you actually want to release to close the auxiliary tool. And then when you do just the blade, it just opens like a normal knife. Wow, okay. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then deep carry left and right clip as well. Uh, backspacer, we actually do a lot of corporate orders and we do a lot of laser engraving in our factory right here for, you know, people's logos or oh, okay. sayings, names, that kind of thing. So, it's pretty yeah, fun. for advertising. Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, the Nest, which we're all aware of, but this guy has definitely been one of our like, you know, hardest it's a great hitting imports. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, left and right deep carry clip, crowned micarta. The Nest for 2023 is on bearings, and we're doing this this blue micarta and the green micarta. That's going to be your three Nest finishes. So kind of year. a blue denim. Yeah, it actually is a blue denim. We have the Warden, I'll show you that in a second, that has the blue denim as well, but it's not crown. Yeah. So it looks kind of like your, your grandpa's cowboy jeans, I call yeah. it. I'm from Colorado, so for me it feels right at home. But yeah, so we've got the green micarta on the Nest and the blue. So what's the blade steel on the Nest? So we're actually upgrading it from D2 to 14C28N. So it's going to be a little bit of an upgrade blade steel. And you know, full stainless. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. going to be okay. something. I think it's going to bring the level of the Nest up even higher. Okay, so. okay. Yes. Yeah, I think there's a bit of D2 burnout in the market. Yeah, we hear that. We listen to people. We hear the customer. Like, I know what they're saying. D2 for me, like I love the seal because it machines well, it's it's sharpenable, it functions great. You know, I live in Colorado, I don't have any rust issues. I know some people in more humid climates have to deal with the oiling or the rust issue. We hear all that, so we're gonna upgrade the steel. And as long as people are willing to, you know, pay a couple extra bucks for it, like I'm happy to give them what they want. It's just gonna cost a little extra dollars. Yeah, okay. Um, lastly, you know, I'll just pull this one out here because I have it on a hook already. But we have the, the Spirit here this little guy so it can be in your pocket we have a, a, a lanyard that swivels back into place where it's not you can't feel it it's not there like it's literally meant to just be in your pocket at that point it's just a pocket knife or you can roll this out here and you can attach it to your key ring anything like that you know if you want to use a magnetic quick release and have it in your pocket that way but once it's out like it's not meant to be back and forth it's just kind of meant to stay there 
it is a button lock, but it's a nice little gear front flipper. So when you open it, I just say it's like a light switch. I just turn off the light switch. Yeah. It throws the blade right out there. It's on bearings again, so super smooth action. Is it a detent lock or what? It is, is it? a detent. So I'm, it's a non-locking knife. No, it has a button lock right here. Oh, it does have yeah. a button. So okay. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, okay. It's a button lock, so you okay. lo unlock to close. I have a detent spring on the front handle though, so okay. it still opens with a nice little kick, but it's a button lock. Oh, okay, yeah. And the reason why I did that was I didn't want the button to be sticking out when it was closed to be the detent itself, because truly the idea is that this fits in your pocket or like, you know, if a gal puts it in her Lululemon pocket on her, on her pants, like it's not going to be a hot spot for them to have in their pocket. Mm -hmm. It's a really smooth knife all the way around. You know, it's not aggressive. It's just meant to be something that you can use to cut a box or open up something, and it's not something that, you know, it's not tactical. It's just a really functional knife. No, I like it. What, what's the blade length on it? So it's, it's, it's a two, under two. Right? Yeah, it's a two inch blade length. It is two yep, inch. It's two inch okay. from the handle. The, the cutting length is only about 1.6. Yeah. 1.7. So but it's yeah. aluminum. Aluminum handles, front and back, and backspacer, carbon fiber billet scales. So it's, it's definitely a, you know, it's not a cheap knife. And then we have the, the aluminum uh, pivot collars on the front and back to kind of accent the color as well. The MSRP in this guy is $89.99, but you know, I think you'll be able to pick you up in the Blade HQ, the Knife Center guys, once they're there, probably for around $75, 70 bucks. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so what was the blade steel on it? This is actually gonna be Nitro V. We're excited oh, to use okay, Nitro V okay. on this guy. So yeah, thank okay. you for reminding me. So yeah, a lot of premium materials on it. It's a small knife, but we got carbon fiber billet, we got nitro V, um, you know, the cool the cool button lock and mechanism, you know, everything about it's it's small, but it's it's a really kick-ass knife. It's Revo like little pocket jewelry, isn't it? 100%. Because with the different colors of blue, purple, you can get black with the orange accents, orange yep. with the orange accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the that's nice. The, the purple has really been driving a lot for us too. Everyone's been really digging the purple. So purple with a black blade. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I like it. I yeah, I hadn't put my hands on one of those yet. I that was uh, yeah. very unique. Very unique. Okay, hold on. If I can get my fingers in front of the camera. Okay, so this is going to be flipped just like this, right? Yep. Okay, easy. And a little button for release. Okay. It's got some heft to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's meant to be a, it is a tool. It's something you know you have. It's got some, when you're yeah, using the knife, it's in your hand. It feels like you have a substantial tool in your hand, even though it's really small. Yeah, three finger knife. And the blade's not heavy enough to drop shit. No. Nope. Drop shit. Okay. But. But you can do it one-handed. Yeah. But yeah, it reminds me of some of the little double detent non-locking. Exactly. I actually knives. first when we first made the first prototype, we did a, a slip joint, and I just really like I liked it, but I was like, I really want to be able to lock it up. So I wanted to keep the detent action that we had, but I wanted to have a button lock on it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Thanks. The warden, the warden this year is getting a little bit of an upgrade too. This is that kind of like grandpa's jean material I was talking about. Yeah. So it just feels like I should have my boots on and my cowboy hat and ride around in Colorado and I'd be all set. But the other cool thing is it's no longer assist open. So it's just a detented bearing knife. So it's just gonna have, you know, it's also upgrading to 14C, going up from 9CR. So we're actually kind of skipping a couple of levels there. Um, but ball bearings, nice and polished. The blue jean, micarta. It's a really beautiful knife for, for again, the money on that. It's a, going to retail somewhere around that $60 mark. Yeah, it's lightweight. I've had, I think I had one in the brown G10. Yep. The micarta is, was assisted. The micarta is actually a little bit lighter than G10. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And yeah, not, not being assisted, I think it's more attractive for the enthusiast yep. market. But maybe not so much for the everyday Joe. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I think we're always, Revo is always walking that line between, you know, the knife enthusiast and the everyday Joe. And I think we're hearing our customers asking for less assisted open right now. So we're, we're you know, we're doing that. We're going to bearings on some things. And left and right, deep carry. Yes, sir. On that, too. Yep. And this is a light, slender, you know, easy carry knife. It's a very straightforward design. There's nothing super fancy about tiny, it, but it's either. yeah, it's just it's meant to be a useful knife. 
Yeah. If I had to have one pocket knife on me for everything, it's one of those knives that it's I think does everything pretty yeah. well. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, awesome. I think you're right. We talked about the nest, and, um, you know, and I think the only other knife we haven't covered on is going to be the spirit knife. Or, I'm sorry, the storm. So let me open this guy up. This yeah, is, that's an interesting design. Yeah, so and the, it's a button lock. It, it's actually an, we're calling it the ox lock. It's obviously based on the oh. axis lock. That oh, it's I'm been, sorry. I it's okay. It, I wasn't looking close. Okay. You're fine. It looks like a button kind, of, especially yeah, when I hold it, it like that. Yeah, did when you so were holding fine. it like that. I'm going. It's but a just lock. The, it's the ox lock, and it's uh, micarta black and green is what is coming in for the handles. We have this Warncliffe uh, blade shape, and then we also have a drop point blade shape. This is okay. an aluminum handle prototype, so bear with me on that. And we're not going to make the aluminum right away, but we basically have those two blade shapes coming, both in a stone wall. So the cutaway in the blade, is that for finger flick or you what? Know, you know, some people can do it, some people can't. I can't. My fingers are too fat to get in there. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, really, it is buried in that handle. Okay. So the, the, the designer in me got a little heavy-handed on this one, I could argue, is the, the finger grooves in the blades, they line up with the blade, so it's definitely an aesthetic thing. Which isn't always bad. I mean, we mentioned pocket jewelry earlier. Like we're literally making pocket jewelry. Yes. So yeah, that's that's what that that's what that is about. But then the drop point, obviously, no hole in the blade, just a more functional traditional yeah, I blade like shape. Yeah, kind of like the drop. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, the drop point is definitely the uh, like everyone likes this. It kind of brings their eyes to it, and then they see the drop point. They're like, oh, I like the drop point. Because it's, yeah. it's more what we wouldn't expect to see. Yeah. Which is why we're doing both. And if you like the Warncliffe, you'll be available, obviously, with the drop point. Yes. But, yeah, left and right clips, access locks. Um, this one, you can see a little prototyping we were do here, doing here as we were trying to add an extra lock feature to this that would slide up into place and yeah. kind of keep it from opening accidentally. Or if you were opening it and closing this, like it might keep it from unlocking. Uh -huh. so the truth is, is it didn't work very well. So we're not moving forward with that feature in production. Okay. Well, if anyone on your videos is wondering what that is, that was literally oh. us prototyping. And you know what? Prototypes, they don't always work. So we're going <laughs> to keep going with what we know works with the ox lock. And uh, we'll keep working on that other feature and see what we can bring out next time. Is that what you call it? The ox lock? Ox lock, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Every now and then the country boy I me mean, still comes out between grandpa's jeans and the ox man we're gonna keep there going. There you go, why not? So yeah. Oh here was the micarta the, the green micarta for the warden as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's a clean blow a good design. Just functional straightforward knife. Functional, yeah. 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 Not every knife has to be like, you know, I mean obviously like this is a great knife. I'm super excited about the spirit, but you can tell like in my mind I feel like you can tell I designed both these knives, but I feel like they're different. They're different enough, and Revo's really trying to spread our design wings a little bit. You know, we're trying to we're trying to go from you know more the vanilla side to bridging into some of the cool like designery side as well. And uh, we're going to keep pushing that button, and and hopefully you guys keep supporting it and liking it, and we'll keep doing it. It's great. Well, thank you for yeah. showing me around the booth and. Uh, I really like the little spirit and what you're doing with the uh, nest. Thank you. And then the amok. Yep. Yeah, th those are big for me. Yeah, for real. For, come see us. In, I know you'll be in Atlanta. Definitely anyone who sees us, if you make it to Atlanta, I have every goal in my fiber to have that amok firing on all cylinders for Atlanta. So That would be way cool. It's going to be rad. Especially if we can you know, nail down that magna cut and just bring something to market that is, uh, you know, what the people want. So that's what we're here to do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank Appreciate you so you. much. Yes, sir.